Hello everybody, Adam Parks here with another episode of Receivables Roundtable. Today I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Jason Hyland with CollaborationRoom.ai. How are you doing today, Jason? I am doing fantastic. Uh, coming off a nice weekend um, and uh, ready to spend some time with you, Adam. How about you? How well, are you greatly, I, you know, I can't complain just wrapping up some time here at our Sterling estate as we kind of get everything flowing back down to Florida here. Um, but I definitely appreciate you coming on, having another chat with me. It's always a pleasure to get to spend a little bit of time together. Um, can you tell everyone that hasn't been as lucky as me to get to know you through the years, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you got to the seat that you're in today? Wow. All right. Well, um, my name is Jason Hyland. I'm on the EVP of sales here at collaborationroom.ai, but that's what I do, not really who I am. Who am I? Well, I am a, uh, I'm a husband to a wonderful wife. I am a fur baby daddy. Um, my wife and I have considered ourselves non-breeders for years, so we're sticking to the fur babies. You might even see a cat. I've already tried to fend him off a couple times. He's tried to jump <laughs> over on my desk. Um, like I, I enjoy a lot of things. I enjoy travel and uh, a lot of things outdoors. I'm kind of a gym rat. And um, but uh, as far as what I'm up to today, you know, it's been kind of a, a long 22 years of working with contact centers, uh, mainly in the first and third party collection agency world. But nowadays with collaboration room.ai, I love it. I get to expand those horizons. Um, you know, typically I was working with domestic companies here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. only, but now, you know, we are contact center agnostic, meaning it's not just collection agencies anymore. I work with every kind of contact center in the world and my territory is global. So it's it's great. I get to wake up in the morning and maybe speak to someone in India. And then I probably end my day talking to somebody in the Philippines and then countless countries in between. Fair enough. Sounds like an exciting lifestyle living on a global scale. But for anyone who hasn't had a chance to see the collaboration room dot AI technology yet, can you tell everyone a little bit about what it is that you guys are doing there? Yeah. Um, well, let me start with the, the main idea uh, of our platform. And then what has happened, which obviously happens with a lot of products as they evolve and mature, is we've actually seen a few newer use case studies come out that are actually growing just as rapidly, if not faster. So the initial use case is, well, in short, we make remote work work for contact centers. Mm -hmm. You know, going back to pre-2020, nobody envisioned remote contact centers being a thing because, well, mm -hmm. Oh, it, 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 the, the contact center was safe. It was productive and, you know, it allowed the culture mm -hmm. to bloom. But um, then the pandemic hit and everything got, you know, our, our floors got scattered like a game of 52 card pickup. And so what we do is we provide a virtual contact center floor platform. What we do is we mirror the floor environment virtually so that frontline leadership all the way up to the CEO, if they want, can engage with, manage, train uh, remote and blended agents just like they were on the floor together. And then we have some security components within the platform that allow a contact center to ensure that the home office is not only conducive to their security and compliance policies, but more importantly for many, conducive to their clients' security and compliance policies. Now, that's kind of the main use case. Contact center, remote or hybrid agents wanting to engage and uh, supervise and, and, and train and make secure. But the additional use cases we've seen is one, people are utilizing it on the floor now. They're finding mm -hmm. ways to be able to uh, supervise more agents with fewer supervisors. And then finally, it's what I'll call auditing. We've got a lot of collection agencies who are leveraging, you know, nearshore and offshore BPOs. We've got brands, I'll just make some up, uh, you know, Walmart, um, Pepsi, Coke, you name it, on down the line. They leverage BPOs. Uh, financial institutions are a big one for us. They've mm -hmm. historically leveraged BPOs. And these BPOs to them have been these third parties 
in another country, maybe thousands of miles away from the people that are managing and auditing them. So what we've seen lately is our clients purchasing the platform, maybe for their internal contact center, but also in parallel to that, putting their third party offshore and nearshore BPO agents on it so that if I'm a bank, I now have instant access to everyone working my project and I can audit visibly and audibly in real time and I can engage and help train those agents so they truly become an extension of my environment. So again, uh, we started with one use case and now it's blossoming into others as the, the product matures. Well, let's talk a little bit about what that underlying technology core is, right? So my understanding is that what you're doing is leveraging facial recognition technology on some level to determine mood set. So from a uh, yeah. from a use case scenario base point, right? Like as we look at the the use case here, talk to me a little bit about how that underlying technology has applied to the call center world. Sure, that, that is a, a big piece of it. So what we do is we leverage cameras and monitor mirroring in real time. So imagine you're looking, you're a supervisor, you're looking at your your monitor, and mm-hmm. you're seeing the real time feed of your agent's video and monitor one and monitor two at the same time. We actually own the patent on that as of January this year. We're like Teams and Zoom and everything like that. You can have multiple videos, but only one monitor being shared. But with our platform, Mm -hmm. you can have multiple videos and multiple monitors so that the supervisor is getting that full view. So that's like the initial basis of the of the, the of the technology. Then from the AI components, one of them is emotional AI. Because when I talk to supervisors and I ask them, what was the number one tool you had when you were on the floor that you lost when you went to remote or hybrid? And not one time has anybody ever mentioned a piece of technology. It was really their eyes. They could see when people were in their seats. They could see when people were on their cell phone. But probably more importantly, they could see the emotions on an agent's face and understand whether a call was going well or going sideways. And if that call was going sideways, then they mm-hmm. could jump into action and either stand behind them like, hey, I'm here if you need me or jump on the telephony platform and coach them. But they've lost that ability to understand when that's happening. So one of the AI components in our platform is the uh, emotion recognition. So things like happy, frustrated, fearful, sad, thoughtful, and you know we have a color for just regular neutral, just gray. So it gives the, uh, the supervisors insight into the emotional state of the agents, much like they had when they were on the floor. Okay, so it's a, it is that kind of tie in or that extension of being in that uh, that call center environment and onto a new layer. Now, as you've, you know, as we were kind of chatting at the um, at the CRS conference, we were talking about some let's call it an unintended consequences of having that technology deployed. Tell us a little bit about that storyline and and kind of what you guys have experienced as uh, as you've had that technology deployed with more and more agents. Yeah, it was um, you know it's something that we're really proud of. Um, uh, at least four times in the last year and a half, our platform, at least four reported times, that is, our platform has essentially helped save the life of agents working from home. And I'll, I'll give you the probably the most the, the story I know the most details about. I won't mention names of companies or the, or the person or anything, but um You know, everybody went to work from home, obviously, and one of our supervisors at one of our clients was sitting there and the agent was actually on his second page. So he wasn't looking directly at her, but he got a notification that from the emotion recognition that something seemed off. So he moved over, brought her up to the front of the screen and quite honestly, looked like she was taking a nap and he thought he was just going to, you know, say something to her, wake her up. And he sent her a chat message, nothing. He um, he tried to private call her through our platform, nothing. He called her cell phone, she didn't move. So he called HR, and HR said, "Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna call the we're gonna call the paramedics." So they called the paramedics. Mm-hmm. And the paramedics arrived, knocked on the door. Um, they essentially had to break down the door because the woman lived alone and was working at at home. And come to find out, she had gone into, I believe it was aphylactic seizure. 
And look, mm. it was the paramedics who saved her life. Uh, we didn't perform CPR or, you know, give her any shots or anything like that to, to save her. But we are very proud of the fact that our um, platform helped notify the supervisor and had our, our platform not been in place, she probably mm. would not be with us today. And we just got another one a couple of weeks ago with a, an agent who was in Oregon and the contact center was in the Midwest and they called the police for a, a quick swing by. Um, the police found that the agent was in a, a medical emergency. And then when the police talked to our client afterwards, they were like, how did you know? And they told them about our platform and the police thought it was one of the coolest things they'd ever seen. And again, said that it saved their lives. So look, we didn't, we didn't build this platform to save lives. Um, but like you put it so eloquently, it's an unintended benefit of our platform that at least four people that have been, you know, have been reported as, as helped or possibly saved mm -hmm. because they were on our platform. Well, I think when people first hear about like, oh, we're using, you know, cameras and emotional um, measurements to determine whether or not, you know, call center agents are performing doesn't sound like, um, you know, the life saving technology that <laughs> it ultimately could be. Right. And I think we find ourselves in a um, in a in a unique situation to where, you know, this is one of those times where when you have that type of a repetitive task with the rise in the work from home statute, right? Like like everybody working from home from all these different locations, not everybody comes from the same, you know, nuclear family. And I think having that kind of technology available provides a yet an additional layer of uh, of interaction especially during those time periods right like especially during we spend most of our lives at work right a huge portion of them sometimes more than we would like that's for damn sure <laughs> you know and and look you know the basis of our platform is engagement i always tell everybody if you're looking for like a pure monitoring platform there's plenty of things out there that'll record all the keyboard mm -hmm. strokes and record them on on camera you know we we made a decision a long time ago not to record anything for privacy and security reasons we don't want to be big brother what we want to do is provide supervisor to agent, agent to supervisor engagement, let people feel like they're a part of a team, but at the same time, implement some tools that also allow for productivity increases, a uh, better training environment, and that security and compliance that's so important. Look, the first couple of years of the pandemic, when remote was growing even faster than it is today, it's still growing globally. Um, but mm -hmm. look, we it was kind of like people just covered up their eyes and ears and just said survive, not really worried so much about security and compliance. It was just survival. But now that that honeymoon is over and regulators and clients are now starting to ask questions about, hey, what are we doing to ensure that that home office is conducive to the compliance standards that we had for many years? You know, we had all these mm -hmm. rules on the floor. No cell phones, for instance. It's a big one on the floor. It's still a rule with people working from home. It's just an unenforceable rule. Then it's yeah, how do you enforce that. it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's lots of rules like that that are still in place. They're still on the books. They're just unenforceable. And with our platform, they, they become rules again. Well, I think that becomes you know, one of the biggest challenges with taking the call center environment and making it remote. When you're dealing with BPO services and other things, I think it does become a little bit easier. And then all of the challenges that you have with having these people be remote, not only the technology systems, but it's like what's around them, right? What's what's looking at the screen that's in front of me? Like there's just so many different things that we all had to, um, I'm gonna say resolve in real time at that point in time, but now, um, security, I've always viewed security as a layered mechanism, right? Like nothing is ever truly secure. It's only secure for a period of time, right? And that's why when you buy um, a safe, for example, like a physical safe to store things, like it's rated in hours. How many hours is it going to, you know, is this thing going to survive in a fire? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I've always looked at its security in this kind of layered I thought format. Of that way. Me, this is, it's a great point. <laughs> when you think about it, 
right from that perspective, this is another one of those layers because you talk about some of the other tool sets that are out there. Like, fine, there, there's absolutely been voice related tool sets that have tried to evaluate the same thing. Now you've got these video tool sets. You start stacking and layering these things on top of each other and you start realizing that security is just a measurement of time and how many different layers. That's why you always talk, you always hear um, discussion about the layering of digital security versus, okay, I have a secure system. I don't have a secure system because that's not, that, that's not a solution, right? There is no, it, it's not a binary question when it comes to how long will it take somebody to break through all your layers? Because eventually it's, they will. How Given long is time, it going to take to disassemble? Yeah. Given enough time, uh, you know, un uninterrupted, eventually they'll get through. I, I never really thought about it that way. I mean, think about what the attacks are at this point. And like, even as you think about attacks and you think about, um, you know, cybersecurity on the whole, it's not really the technical infrastructure systems that are the threat. The threats come from the social engineering, right? And the social engineering is the live people. Understanding um, how quickly somebody could become or appear to be confused is another layer, right, to the security um, stack, uh, when we're thinking about those things. So to me, it's it's really, it's all about the little pieces and putting those little pieces together to develop a layered security protocol. You know, it's, it, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, of the security features or stacks that we have in our platform, you know, one, we use AI a lot for that. One is we trained our AI to know what a cell phone looks like. So if we were sitting mm -hmm. on my system and I went like this right now, we're, our system will notify phone. this. Right there. Yeah, our supervisor, the supervisor <laughs> is going to get a little heads up. Hey, there's a cell phone. And same thing if like somebody walked up behind me. Now we offer privacy backgrounds like, you know, virtual and blurred so that, you know, some of these agents are working in their bedroom. We don't need the supervisor to see some young lady's bedroom. But the AI still sees what's behind it because it's really easy to secure data from a remote server to this monitor. The problem with remote work becomes this monitor who all has access What's on the to monitor? look at it. So like for instance, yeah. if a spouse or a roommate or a boyfriend were to walk up and we were to see multiple faces in the video, that again triggers the AI. Mm -hmm. But I really believe the biggest security feature of our platform isn't a feature, it's just the platform. It's now mm -hmm. having that engagement and people knowing that, you know, just like on the floor, their actions are visible. And they actually will respond just like we humans do to being supervised. They do less things wrong. And as a matter of fact, if somebody's looking like, you know, people used to have to break into databases to steal data. Well, mm -hmm. now all you have to do it's is get a job working anymore. from home. You can just get a job working from home. And everybody's like, well, we've locked down the USBs and we've done all that. Nothing stops this thing from taking a picture. You know, now, yeah, uh, not when so everybody's got a super spy device in their pocket. Yeah, exactly. So really, the, 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 the thing is, my clients know that there's these cell phones out there. They know that there's multiple people in these rooms. But when they bring on our platform, they're like, we don't catch anybody. And I'm like, that's exactly the purpose of the platform. It's not to be this big security <laughs> the deterrent. platform. It's just to let them know. It's a deterrent. Exactly. Hey, everybody get out of mm -hmm. the room, man. My supervisor is going to see you or, you know, and everybody's like, well, what if they have their cell phone down here? I'm like, well, we know what this looks like. <laughs> we know. But what it's this a series of patterns and behaviors, yeah, right? It's the same exactly. way that you're able it, look, it's the same way that the um, the profiling is done in order to identify potential threats, right? It's a series of yep. patterns and behaviors over a period of time. And how does that catch into it because I think the one glance at the cell phone is a lot harder to catch than the rapid eye movement up and down, which is right. Like a whole other series of neuro linguistic programming discussion that we could have at a Absolutely. later date. Cause I feel like that would be a fun discussion to have. Yeah. Together. You know, and, and going back to like people just start responding, you know, with the case studies we've done, um, well, let's mm -hmm. just take collection agencies. That's probably going to be a lot of our audience here today. We've done several case studies and all of our case studies are taking the first four weeks, measuring certain mm -hmm. KPIs, the <laughs> lowest production jumps. Let's just say revenue. The lowest of our case studies is 8%. The highest has been 
increases within 30 days. As our platform helps to not create new habits, it's to remind them of the habits that they had. Now, we also got to remember some agents have never worked on a floor, never once. Mm -hmm. So there, in that in that sense, it is creating you know the, the 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 new habits for them because it's been the wild west for a lot of these agents since they became a contact center agent. You know, they they've never known. No, three like. or four years ago, right? And like this is still new to them. They still have never worked on a floor. It's weird to think about, but it is the reality of the business. Yeah, it really is. And you know, I, I when we were at CRS, I talked to some clients and they're like, or prospects, they're like, well, we're, we're testing bringing people back. And, you know, I'd ask and they're like, well, production and, and culture. I get the production mm -hmm. side. Now, culture, you know, I always try to, it, it, there is no culture that is static. It evolves over time. So I mm -hmm. understand wanting to be engaged, but your culture can change and you can engage in different ways. But and then, and then there, the productivity. So really, I can boil down any contact center I speak to into three categories, just three. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of subtle differences between all the contact centers. Sure. I don't mean to say that there's no difference, but there are the contact centers who sent people home during the pandemic and brought them back. And they are suffering from recruitment and retention issues. Um, they can't fill projects. One of the main reasons why we're starting to see more and more collection agencies utilize near shore and offshore. BPOs is because they can't fill seats and keep them in the seats. Mm -hmm. Then you have the people who sent them home and, and left them at home. Their concerns are more around that productivity, security, compliance, training, engagement. And then finally, you got the people that went hybrid or blended. And on the surface, that seems like the perfect middle of the road, you know, a compromise. But unfortunately for those folks, they just have to worry about all of the concerns that I just mentioned from the first two scenarios, they still have recruitment and retention area issues because they got to recruit from, you know, this radius around their office. And then they still have the security compliance and all uh, productivity concerns for when those people are out of the office. So we tried to provide a platform that answers all of those, that solves for all of those issues mm -hmm. and allows people to work from home um, because look, Work from home opens up job opportunities to so many people that have not had them in the past, i.e., like, say, single mothers. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up with a single mom, and she either had to work or be home with the kids. It was a choice. And if she was home with the kids, she was, you know, having to accept governmental help in order to do it. Mm -hmm. If she worked, then, you know, we spent, my sister and I spent a lot of time alone, but had she had a job where she could be at home and we could be out in the living room playing with our toys and, you know, outside kicking the can, whatever it is, um, that could have changed your life. So I'm, I'm a big proponent of work from home for that very reason. I, I agree. I think this is a, another tool and mechanism that helps to enable that to be a reality for those in which the job makes sense. Right. And I, I do think that there's some, you know, there's some things to be said about how culture changes in a remote environment and, you know, just some of the things that we ultimately have to deal with in um, in this more remote type workforce. But um, having the right tools in place that enable us to recreate some of that camaraderie, some of that opportunity, some of that um person-to-person -person interaction and other interesting ways, I think is really a lot of where the future lies. But Jason, I really appreciate you coming on and having a chat with me today. It's always fun to uh, to reconnect with you, whether it be in person or on camera. Absolutely, Adam. Anytime you want me on, whether it's to talk about this or to just talk about whatever I enjoy our time together, I really appreciate all of the things that you do for the industry. And um, thank you. That's really what it comes down to. Thank you. Well, much appreciated. For those of you that are watching, if you have additional questions you'd like to ask Jason or myself, you can leave those in the comments on LinkedIn or YouTube. If you have additional topics you'd like to see us discuss, you can leave those in the comments below on YouTube and LinkedIn as well. And I'm sure I can get Jason to come back at least one more time to help me continue to create great content for a great industry. But until next time, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate your time and attention today. And Jason, thank you so much for coming on one more time. I 
I always appreciate your insights. You're welcome, sir. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.